of May 2022, and this is Wake Up GI with Jeffrey Smith. As promised, we have our credit coach in here today. I'm very much looking forward to talking to her. And just like I told you all out there in the audience, I've been butchering her name all morning long, so I'm going to give her the opportunity to go out here and say her name. Uh, first of all, welcome, Robin, but go ahead and say your last name, please. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and my name is Robin Shobomahin. Okay, I never would have gotten that. I never would have gotten that if you didn't say it, but first of all, I appreciate you coming in here. You're going to be giving us a little bit of an education on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Of course, everybody knows about credit and credit score, and mm -hmm. I like your T-shirt, that hashtag credit swag. Absolutely. I'd love to have some of that, but <laughs> unfortunately, I missed that Coles payment the other day, so I don't have that credit <laughs> swag. Uh, but uh, first, tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So again, my name is Robin Shoba Mahin. I'm the founder of Social Culture and Credit Repair, and uh, we started this business exactly five years ago. Wow. Yeah, so it, 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 I promise you, it feels like overnight. Yeah. But yeah, we started this business uh, five years ago because I had this idea that I just no longer wanted to be in the corporate environment. Yeah. And I needed something more fulfilling in my life. And it really just took that for me to decide what was the next step in my life. Yeah. And I needed that freedom. <laughs> now, what brought you, okay, now give us a little bit of your background then, mm -hmm. because what, what was your, what were you doing? Or were you in the financial world? What kind of drew you into the credit area? Yeah, so I was actually in marketing and sales. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, I mean, it's all about quotas and numbers and all this and that. And again, it just, it's totally different. You know what I mean? Yes. Like that aspect, that industry is completely different from credit. And uh, I think credit, really came about because when I started thinking I need to do something more in my life, right. credit kept coming back because my thoughts were, what was I able to overcome? Yeah. What has helped me in my life to be able to do the things that I need to do? And right. so credit, it was all about credit. I like that. I so, appreciate yeah. that. So we're talking <laughs> with Robin. We're going to uh, try to learn a little bit and get some helpful tips for ourselves on this, uh, on this wonderful yes. Tuesday. You know, I want to ask you this because you, you, you know, you're probably the person that can answer this. I remember... You know, when I was growing up, my grandfather, who I, you know, I I love very much, my father's father, uh, was from Natchez, Mississippi, and he mm -hmm. was a Southern gentleman. One of the things my father always used to tell me mm -hmm. that his dad told him was, "You pay as you go." You know what I mean? I mean, I remember my dad told me a story about when he and my mother got married and they went out and bought a car. You know, my uh, my dad, I mean, my grandfather set it up because he knew the guy, and then when my father was over here talking about making payments. He said the look on my father on his, on his father's face. <laughs> right. And but but nowadays credit is pretty much a part of our daily life. I mean, it's yeah. so much so that credit scores are actually kind of what you look at. And certain jobs actually check your credit score as well. Yes, they do. So explain us about credit and you know really what does a credit score mean and why is it important? Mm -hmm. Well, the credit score in a whole, at this point, where we are in life, it defines who you are. Yeah. And it's your representation. It, your I credit like that. score speaks for you. I like, okay, mm -hmm. so it, 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 kind of get into that because I like that because it's unfortunate, but mm -hmm. it is how the business or people, people in the business community, your potential creditors exactly. look at you. Exactly. So with that, if you have a high score, what they're looking at is, you're responsible, you yeah. make good decisions, you know how to manage certain things. And I mean, it just really falls into our life. Yeah. If you have lower scores, they're looked at as, okay, Risky. caution, yeah. let's be careful. We can't extend too much to you because we don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. And based off what we see, you're not doing, uh, you're not really following the rules of credit. Right. And that's really what that looks like. So our scores completely define in, in the credit world our character. Yes. That that credit score is our character. This is a this is this is a, a very amazing because I want to I've got so many questions to ask yeah. you by the way. <laughs> uh, but first of all, I would love you to give the name of your business so so Absolutely. people can uh, kind of put a association when with this conversation mm -hmm. we're having. Social coaching credit repair. Social coaching credit repair. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Robin. <laughs> she is the CEO of this wonderful company. Now let me ask you this. Let's get back into this credit thing. And so you know, I've always, you know, one of the things that I've always kind of wondered and, you know, I've, I've never heard anybody bring this up, uh, in particular when you, you know, when you have politicians running for office, uh, is I don't think, you know, when we're, when we're talking about equality and we're talking about certain communities that are, you know, underserved and things like that, 
one can make the argument, you know, we took, you know, just like we're over here having mm -hmm. conversations about student loan debt and things like that. One can make the argument that certain communities and certain demographics are automatically behind the eight ball because of the power of the credit score. You know, there's certain times when you're working, you know, paycheck to paycheck and you have to prioritize things and you're raising a family that you might, you know, you, things might get away from you sure. or you might miss a payment or two here. And God forbid, sometimes you might even lose possession of a certain item. And that is a big blow to your sure. credit report. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, and, and do you do you feel like certain communities, how can we kind of deal with that? I know. I That's just a like... great question. <laughs> so you know what? I have to be honest. Uh, I I have viewed thousands of reports. Yes. And I got my own theory behind this. Yeah. Based off what I've seen in different communities, some scores are lower than others. Right. Just based off that zip code. Yes. And it's the truth. I mean, I can look at uh, reports that virtually mirror each other. Uh, just you know, based off zip code alone, scores are higher. Right. Versus scores being right. lower simply because of where, where, they you're, live. where you're located. Yeah. Um, so that's a disadvantage right there. Yes. Um, and I have also seen, I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> so <laughs> the one thing I, I would say about our credit scores that they are made up of a probability. Yeah. Um, and that probability, of course, uh, will consist of uh, your location. Right. Um, does your neighbor have good credit? Because if your neighbor has poor credit, your scores are generally lower. Wow. Simply because of that alone. Yeah. So there, there are complete disadvantages to that. Um, when it comes to uh, situations where, you know, a person may be uh, late on a payment. Yeah. The sad, harsh reality is you could be paying on time for years and your score slowly creep up. One late payment, your scores drop 100 See, points. Yes. Just like that. Yeah. You know, and, and there are things that happen to our credit that are out of our control. So maybe you didn't miss the payment, but it was reported wrong. Right. You know, that's going to hurt you. And then you have folks out here fighting to get these items off and they just tell you, sorry, it's nothing I can do. But see, that's not true. Right. Because those who put it on can then take it off. Yeah. They just choose not to. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we're talking with uh, Miss Robin. Once again, I don't want to butcher her last name. She told me just to call her Robin, and that's what I'm going to do. But uh, we definitely appreciate her taking time out of her busy morning on a Tuesday. It's a beautiful day outside to stop by and hang out with us and give us a little knowledge. I'm not going to pick all your brain, but I am going to try to pick a little bit of it. You know, let's get to a credit score and things like that. And, and, and I'd love for you to kind of tell us what it what, what is compiled of but let me ask you this one some of the things and i don't know this is a legitimate question from mm -hmm. you, from your oh boy over here jeff i don't know the answer to this but you always hear that when you go out here and you have people look at your credit or if let's just say you inquire you mm -hmm. you fill out a, a credit card application mm -hmm. or you yourself go out here and try to get that it somehow knocks your credit down what what what's that about yeah 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 so if you are one of those folks that are just applying everywhere like i'm just trying to get some credit <laughs> thanks for saying yeah no we're not gonna no 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 yeah. because they don't trust it they look at that being credit greedy yeah and something's going on and they don't want to be a part of it oh and so they will deny your credit. And for so that. they take they that takes a hit at your credit. Absolutely, it's uh, it's called a heart injury. So you can lose anywhere from two to three points just by inquiring or applying for stuff. Yes, yes. Oh, now, God. if there was a soft pull, soft pull just means that they just need the last four of your social, yeah. and they're just doing a little overview. Yeah. They're not actually submitting an application. Wow. Now, yep. what are this? Okay, now let's get into the credit. What are some of the things that kind of build your credit up? Because, you know, let's start with credit cards, because a lot of us, I mean, you know, I'm kind of, I'm a lot more disciplined right now yeah. than I used to be. I, I really do. I've got a two a couple of credit cards and I don't use them whatsoever. I use my debit cards, my bank cards, where the cash can kind of get taken out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. <laughs> But but so tell me about credit cards and their value and why should I be using yeah. it? Because if you had seen her face, ladies and gentlemen, when I just said this, you would have thought I spilled something on myself. Go ahead and tell So credit cards are definitely our friend. You have to use credit in order to continue to build credit. Yeah. Uh, so one, I would say to someone who doesn't have any credit at all and who is completely afraid of credit, you need to look at that credit like that's your tool, like that's your ticket to the next big step. Yeah. Without a credit card, without the, I should say, the absence of credit, that makes up 30% of your scores. Yeah. So without having that, look how much of that cumulative score you're missing out on. Right. So to truly build your reports or your scores, I should say, you need revolving debt. There's no way around it. 
I just learned something right here. So I need to go out here and start using that credit card. Yes. All absolutely. right, shopping spree coming up this weekend. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. <laughs> and you know what? Also to that, I'm, you mentioned as far as like using debit cards. Yeah, because you know those cool, you know, there's always that option, debit or credit. Which mm -hmm. one should I be using? Credit. Okay. 100%. I mean, you are protected. If something should happen to that purchase, it's so much more easier to, uh, you know, you have leverage when you're using your credit opposed to just using money out of your bank. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's so, like, I don't even walk around without my debit card. You don't? No way. You... It's credit for everything. Oh, really? So you? <laughs> so are you against debit cards? I am against debit card. That's oh. my next post. Okay. Yeah, I'm totally against it. Are... It's all about credit at this point. Yeah. It really is. Now, okay, now, what about a person who says, listen, all this sounds great, and this is something I'm going to inspire to, mm -hmm. but right now... I don't have it, you know. I gotta, I gotta stay within my my finances. And a credit card or pressing credit mm -hmm. is going to get me outside my thing. And now I'm going to run around and owe people. And it, right. I'm gonna get, you know. Next thing I know, I'm gonna find myself in some debt, and I won't be able to kind of blossom mm -hmm. when I start to move up. And so, what do you say to a person like that? It says I just, I can't just go around with credit card. Right. But see, if you think about it, there are debts that you have to pay. Right. Your utilities, you know, yeah. cell phone bills, you know, for folks who want to pay for cable and internet, you're paying for that every month. Right. So why not use your credit to pay for that? Now, that's a good point because my wife was saying something like that. Now, mm -hmm. so are you of the school of thought that like, let's say like she does it with her water bill and with, uh, you know, there's a she has a certain credit card that these bills are That's paid right. off of. And she says that this is a mechanism to build credit. Is she right? She is 100% right. Oh. Listen to your wife. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so what you're and so when that happens, how does that go into the reporting? What are, mm -hmm. what is the, what are the people who are monitoring this activity? What are they getting that I'm right. paying things on time? Exactly. Exactly. So one, you need to have active, um, access to your cards, right? You want to make sure that you have your revolving debt. And even with making those payments to utility bills, things like that, you always still want to stay under 30% of your credit limit. Yeah. So that's why that's my yeah, next question. Keep going. Exactly. So what they're seeing is they're seeing active involvement in the credit industry. Yeah. That's what they're seeing. They want to see that you have transactions that you're paying back on time. So I would say if you're using those cards to pay for utilities and things like that, put them on auto. Yeah. Because again, these are bills you have to pay anyway. Anyway. So why not get credit for? Because these are not bills that you would see on your reports unless they are in default. Right, right. So outside of that, you're not getting credit for those bills. So that is one of the best ways for you to get credit. Wow. By yeah. paying them that way. Absolutely. Now let's get into, all right, uh, some of the purchases. I like what you said because that was my next question about 30%. How mm -hmm. much should I use of that credit card limit? You said just 30%. Exactly. So... Whatever your credit limit is, you want to stay at 30% or less. And truth be told, I would say stay at 20% or less. Yeah, absolutely. Less is best. Yeah. Um, because if you max this card and then assume, oh, I can pay it back in 30 days, um, you're gonna your scores are going to be lessened simply yeah. because of that. Like, it is a huge deal. A lot of my clients feel as though I could use it as long as I'm paying it back in 30 days. Right. No, that is not how credit works. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> stay low, stay great. You stay that's low, what... <laughs> stay great. I like that. <laughs> that's the concept. Uh, if you use your card and you max it or you're well over 30%, on our reports, it shows what our credit limit is, what the balance is, and also what that high limit is. Right. So it is being reflected. We don't have emergencies every single month. Right. And so the banks will give us a little leniency. You say, okay, fine, you went over once, maybe twice. But there's no way that you have emergencies every single month. Yeah. That's going to drop your scores. Absolutely. This yeah. is amazing. We're talking mm -hmm. with Robin. Of course, uh, she is a credit coach. Isn't that mm -hmm. the Absolutely. proper title? Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> and, I, you know, I've heard people and I've seen little ads about people who talk about, hey, credit, and we can build your credit. I've never said and had a conversation with a person who, mm -hmm. I mean, you know your stuff. I mean, you're. I, I'm actually mm -hmm. learning a lot that I did not know okay. after all these years of <laughs> buying stuff. Uh, and so let's get into kind of your area of specialty without, you know, giving everything out. Of course, mm -hmm. Robin is in business, and I don't, and I always tell people, come on, I appreciate because I can ask a lot of questions. And I don't want you to necessarily give everything away for free. You do no. provide a useful <laughs> service and I want people to come see you. So I'm not, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't want to go too far into it. But if you can, let's talk about credit mm -hmm. repair and credit rebuilding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some of the, the, the main things that you've seen that have really torpedoed people's credit? 
Number one, student loans. Student loans. <laughs> we agree. Yeah. I wish I had my applause right. thing working. Exactly. <laughs> student loans. Yep. Now, student loans. Now, how do you deal with that, though? You know, one of the things, and you know this, obviously, going to college and things like this, and, you know, I talk about it all the time. I'm not going to get into one of my philosophies, but, you know, when you kind of see what's going on now with certain majors and certain degrees mm -hmm. is, you know, you go out, you know, this is why I say the world is becoming a lot more skills oriented, you know, and, yes. and so if you can go out here and get you some vocational skills as well and then maybe build on it, I, I would all, always suggest that to younger people. But mm -hmm. let's get to what you just got through talking about. So you go out here. And let's say, and I'm not taking any shots at them because I've got friends who were in college with me, majored in sociology. But say you come out with sociology mm -hmm. degree and you basically go to a nice four-year college, $95,000 education for four years. But you're coming out possibly topping off at a $52,000, $53,000 a year job. Right. How are you going? How are you supposed to kind of insert yourself into the the economy as a whole? You know where you can go out here and possibly marry your college sweetheart, yeah. buy that house, get a car, and really start to participate in the economy. Mm -hmm. How do you go out here and deal with that? So if you're you're just starting off and you're trying to set up yourself to get that main that elephant in the room, which is that student loan, how should you do it, or how do you deal with that? Yeah, it, it's I have to be honest, it, it's unfortunate, and I think that um, in a lot of households. People were conditioned to assume the only way for you to be successful, you have to go to a four-year college, yeah, you have to get yeah. a degree, and, you know, had that type of structured environment. Um, I don't actually agree. Yeah, no, <laughs> I no, think that there's a whole lot of uh, different other options for you <laughs> Absolutely. without me taking out a bunch of uh that and and I am a part of that because I took you know I went to school got a four year degree yes, and all that yes um not in that field whatsoever right. <laughs> <laughs> you know and still got that debt yeah but uh no what I look what I like to say especially to young people before they even get into that realm yes I need you to to think think about the type of life that you want yeah. think about what all this looks like. Uh, do your research. What is that? Uh, what is that industry going to pay you? Yeah, that's what you should be looking at. So this debt versus my career, does this make sense? Yes, that's yes. where I'm coming from. Right. And that's what we preach to our kids, because number one, I'm not going to co-sign for any student loans. It's right. not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if you choose to go to school, I'm here. I'm going to support you. Um, I'm going to support you by continuing to talk to you about yeah. those things. But no, uh, student loan debt, it is, it's actually very sad. Yes. You know, because again, once those loans hit your reports, yeah. all it takes is is one, one hit. And when I say one hit, I'm referring to a late payment. And student loans are so interesting because most people that have loans have multiple loans. Right. And when they suggest that you're late, they don't just hit one loan. They hit all of them at right. the same time. Right. Right. So just imagine all of a sudden you got like 10 late payments, your scores, it's just going to kill you. Amazing. Your yeah. And the unfortunate part is you didn't obtain all these loans at the, at the same time. It's not possible for you to be late across the board at the same time. So of course, this is something that is disputable Yeah. Um, for folks that then go and consolidate these loans. You have the new loan because you consolidate. You have all the old, old loans still on your reports. Your reports are reflecting that you owe more than you actually owe. Right. This is a problem. Yeah, it is. So, you know, it just So goes this on. is where you come in. This is where, because, you know, yeah. you do, you know, I have heard of, you know, legal firms, you know, some of these uh, previous, well, these firms out here that mm -hmm. have advertised about credit and I'm not going to name any. I think you know what, mm -hmm. one of them starts with an L yep. Uh, yep. and all those different groups. And one of the things that you, you know, when you, from the outside looking in, it's, it, it seems as they kind of have conversations with your creditors and then they kind of work some out and they get a little, it, and it just seems like, okay, maybe I should call my creditors. Maybe I should do that. But, mm -hmm. but a lot of times, most of us, from what I've found, don't know exactly how much we might be in debt because there's certain mm -hmm. times when you might've defaulted or, or maybe something as you talk about is inaccurate mm -hmm. on your credit report. And you've been walking around for years, not, not knowing. knowing. Yeah. 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 And so what do you do? How do you find out all this stuff? Well, Besides coming to your office, of course. Oh, first come to me, but no. <laughs> but one thing I would say is, I mean, you should be obsessed with your credit report. Yeah. You really should. <laughs> I think it's something that you should look at often. You want to see what's going on. Now, of course, there are ways to protect yourself where you can have, you know, um, fraud alerts and things right, like right, that right. to help you. Um, but with that being said, the way people pick up their cell phones, you need to open up and take a look at your credit report. Right. So many things could happen. And again, when you think that things are are reporting the way that they should, just know that there's 
there's humans behind that. And right. humans make mistake all make mistakes all the time. Yes. So there could be a human uh, error on your report. You want to catch that. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people, they, they call me and they're like, I haven't seen my report in years. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. What? <laughs> How do you walk around this earth without looking at your report? You know, so... <laughs> Now explain, yeah. now, now explain to us, okay, this is another question. You can tell I've been waiting to, to, to be able to talk to somebody about this. Okay, explain to us what, what a secure credit card is. Because, you know, in particular, you see it, You, I mean, it's pretty much commonplace now, but you used to kind of see it in certain communities more than others. But it is pretty much kind of commonplace now mm -hmm. in which you get people to load up these cards in order to build up their credit. Yeah. Does that work? So, yes, it absolutely works. Um I look at a secure card, <clears throat> excuse me, I look at a secured like a card, like a prepaid card with great benefits. Yes. The benefit is it will report, uh, you know, to all three bureaus. Yeah. And really what happens is you have to secure with your own funds. Right. So at this point, um, unfortunately, you are not trustworthy for a bank <laughs> to extend credit. So right. then you have to say, fine, I'm going to start with my own funds and I'm going to show you that I know how to manage. It. Yeah, that's really what that is. So a secure card is no different than a traditional card. You just secure with your own funds. And then as things progress, do they elevate your your limits and things like that? And at what and do exactly. you end up graduate to where they give exactly. You a card? Okay. <laughs> exactly. So you are out of the program, and, you know, usually about six or seven months, as long as you do right. Yeah. So if you do right, meaning you're paying on time, you stand nice and low, 30% or less, then they're going to say, okay, fine. We, we've seen what you've done. Right. Now we're going to go ahead and extend credit to you. And you can keep on this road. It doesn't take long to build positive credit. Right. You just have to be disciplined and stay focused. And if you have something that you truly want to do, then it's, it's, you can no longer say, I didn't know. Right. Because there's enough resources out here for you to find out. You know what I mean? Yes. So if you take a look at it and you say, fine, this is what I want to do. You set your goals in place. You can make anything happen. Now, I want to I, I want to get back to the credit report in a second. But, you know, as we're talking and, and once again, Robin is absolutely beaming when she starts. To, I mean, you really have <laughs> found your calling. I mean, Thank you. you love talking about you love this. Yes. And it, it, I can just feel it. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you about um, credit going back to our initial conversation, because, as I said, there are people out here that have just said, you know what? To heck with it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a 570 or I'm at 620. I'm not going to get out of this anytime soon. I'm just going to live my life uh, as if, you know, as if it doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. Now, would you explain to the audience about why credit does matter? Because even if you can go out here and let's say purchase a car or you can go out here and purchase a T or, or you're purchasing items that you might be able to kind of, you know, get into a sure. payment plan with Talk about the interest and and, uh, and 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 those things that you're you're paying yeah. double or, or the money you're paying on top of money by not having good credit. That, that is absolutely correct. If you haven't um, shown uh, your future creditors <laughs> that you are responsible, then they are definitely not going to trust you. It costs a whole lot to uh, to have low scores. It costs you a lot of money yeah. to have low scores. You could have a healthy income and have low scores, then you're paying much more as well. Yeah. So you're not even being able to uh, appreciate that income alone. Um, and as far as um, obtaining debt with high interest rates, that is a no-no across the board. Yeah. I mean, you like you said, you're paying triple on something yeah. that should have only been a couple hundred dollars. Right. And again, this is simply because of that score. That score matters. Yeah. It matters across the board. Uh, you did mention earlier about... Um, your employment. Yes. There are companies, several companies that I know very well that will deny you simply because of that credit score. Yeah. Because again, you're walking in with like a big S on your chest, like, sorry, okay, I have that credit, but I need a job. You know what I mean? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, so. <laughs> I, now, I'm glad you explained that to people out there because I did wonder, I remember this was years ago and I was, I, this was maybe over 10, 12 years ago and I was applying for a job or something mm -hmm. and they were, they asked my credit score and I was like, what the, what's this right. all about? Why do they need to know my credit <laughs> score? And you just kind of explained it because mm -hmm. once again, this is part of sometimes this is the total package. This is looking at you, not just That's listening right. to what you say. That's I get to right. see how you move in the world. Exactly. <laughs> and so they're looking at you saying, okay, well, if your score is a five, then that tells me a lot about who you are. <laughs> I'm like, but it's not me. You're right. No, but yeah, that's just how that works. Right. Even with our insurance, yes. auto insurance, if you have low scores, you're paying more. Yeah. Why is that? They think you're defaulting your auto insurance. That's exactly right. Because, um, 
it, the the census is people that have lower scores tend to drive faster. They, <laughs> <laughs> they tend to have <laughs> more tickets. They yeah, you know yeah. they don't make the best decisions. Well, yeah. So you're paying more. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I'm getting overwhelmed right here. Uh, we're talking to Robin once again. Robin, I'm sorry. Give us your company again because this is amazing. Yes. You got to go check her out Thank for real. You. Social coaching credit repair. Social coaching credit repair. I can remember that. I'm going to remember that. That's for sure. So let's talk a little bit about as I said this is what you do but mm -hmm. if you can uh let's start talking a little bit about building that credit up say uh, say there's somebody right now that has been listening to the show and has said you know what i'm gonna go do it i'm gonna mm -hmm. go finally go take a hard look under yeah. the you know behind the curtain and see what's going on <laughs> and they find out that they're somewhere around the 580 or 620 mm -hmm. and you know it's just overwhelmed. You're just like, oh my God, look where I'm at. This is why. So what are some of the first steps? Right. So some of the things that um, that I feel, number one, anything you do, in my opinion, you can do it on your own. Yes. If you really decide this is what you want to do. Um, I would say take a look at your personal information that's listed on your reports. Is your name spelled correctly? Is, is there multiple addresses, multiple names? Everything in your reports matter. Yeah. Everything across the Everything. Board. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And if that be the case, the only thing that I would ever suggest uh, disputing online would be your personal information. Anything outside of that, not a chance. Right. You, you don't want to dispute that online. But your personal information, you absolutely should. Also, take a look at um, accounts. Are they reporting more than once? Yeah. A lot of times I've seen that, whereas uh, people have duplicate accounts. It's nothing that they did. But again, there's human error. Right, right. So I would look at that. Um, if you see an account that you know you have nothing to do with, yes. you aren't associated with it, these are the type of items that you would dispute. Yeah. Now, you know? how long do things stay on your credit report? Say that you, you were in college and you mm -hmm. had that credit card. You know, they send you that. Once you get into college, you know that yeah. time you get that stuff in the mail. <laughs> and it's like, come on, get a credit card, right. young scholar. <laughs> and you go and get one. You didn't have a job or anything yet. And mm -hmm. you're using it to buy clothes, take a girl, all that stuff. Yeah. And then just one day you forgot about it, you walked away from it or what have you, and here it is 25 years later. Is that still there? <laughs> so there are some accounts. I'm asking like, for a friend. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, accounts can actually remain for quite some time. Um, it is said that accounts will last up to seven years. Yeah. But that is based on the date of last activity. Yeah. So what that means is if a creditor calls you and says, okay, hey, you got this debt, whether you know about it or not, and you say, okay, I want to do the right thing. I want to make a payment. Right. One payment starts the clock over. Oh, my God. So that means every for every payment, the date of last activity starts over. Wow. That allows that account to be on your report for seven I years. I never heard that because yes. I have heard the seven-year rule. Yep. But if you decide, that I'm going to make contact with that person, and, and I'm going you know, to try to get back and try to pay it down. Yep. When you send that payment, the clock starts over again. All over again. Every time you make a payment. Oh, my goodness, Yeah. So, it, so that means that account still remains. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and so you're just starting it over on yourself. Absolutely. So, yeah. okay. So you were talking about, you, you, and I appreciate you saying that about, you know, you can, you, you always suggest, and there are people out here that can do this themselves, but I would also add that, you know, the process would seem overwhelming. I mean, to mm -hmm. really get down here and know what to look for, right. know what you're looking at. You know, because, you know, sometimes, once again, we have our memories. We're human. You don't even, you're like, wow, I would, did I really go to that, you know, that mm -hmm. store there? Or did I really owe that? And so if that become, if, if you kind of do access your credit report, and you see some things, you're not sure, mm -hmm. you got questions, then it, what what's the next step? Come see somebody like you. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I would say so, honestly, because unless you are really, um, equipped and understand what those consumer laws look like yeah then you might make a lot of mistakes you might cement the fate and have that you know account on your report for right. many years to come right and it's unfortunate i think um <clears throat> excuse me logically people would assume if i have an account on my report a collection account right i should pay it and then i'm good right well see that's not the case <laughs> because if you pay a collection while it's listed on your report it's going to lower your scores that's number one. That's number one. So when collection agencies contact you and they're asking you for information, well, I need to verify your name. I need to verify your address. Hold on a minute. Exactly. You want me to verify an account that's listed on my report. I'm not going to do it. Right. I'm not going to do anything close to that. 
And I would say that to anyone listening, the last thing that you would want to do is verify your information because what they're doing, they're trying to make sure that they have all their dots and, you know, oh, dots circled so, so they can of, say, okay, so I know this, this is you. Yeah. So now that I know it's you, based on the fact that you verified your name and your address, we coming after you. Right. Thank you for helping me. Oh, my God. <laughs> so they're kind of fishing when they come. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. man. So to, just to uh, help understand what that looks like, when a collection hits your reports, it's because they purchased the debt from our creditors. Right, right. I mean, our creditors will sell our debts for pennies on the dollar to collection agencies. Yeah. Collection agencies are basically purchasing a bill of sale yeah. that does not have all of your information. This information could be someone else, but if it's your name, they're going to contact you to see if, in fact, it's it you. It is you. And so you're like, yeah, that's me. This is my name. Okay, what else? They're like, okay, thank you. Guess who owes this? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's not smart. No. Not smart. Oh, so, my, yeah. You did. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Robbie. So, and so, okay, now that we know about that, mm -hmm. what are some of the next steps? I mean, it's, oh, okay, so... If I come to your office and things of that nature, mm -hmm. what does the process look like? What are you, what, what, I'm sitting in front of Robin now. I've, I've admitted my faults. I've, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm admitted my shame. <laughs> and I ask you, Robin, please help, help. Mm -hmm. I need to buy that yacht one day, but please help. What do I do? What do I do yeah. first? What do I need? So the number one thing, uh, our company name derives from social coaching because this is a social aspect yes. of things. I don't feel as though when someone uh, comes to me that they are in the wrong. Right. Because I'm totally on your side. <laughs> so what you tell me is what I'm believing. Yes. And I have no reason not to. Um, what I would say to my clients, let me find out what your goals are. Let me find out what your needs are. That's how I'm able to better assist you. Nice. And we go from there. Um, it's very important for me to make sure that we're focusing on things that are truly hurting your scores up front. Yeah. And then we work our way, you know, backwards, so to speak. Yeah. The last thing that I would usually touch is increase. That only makes up 10% of your scores. Yeah. But the meat of what's going on is what I want to address right now. Right. So, yeah, we reach out to the creditors. We reach out to the collection agencies. We reach out to the bureaus to make sure this information is reported properly. Because right. if it is not, yeah. it's got to go. So you so you get down in the weeds and you really do a lot of that tedious stuff to find out because okay. as you as you've been pointing out during mm -hmm. this conversation, this is humans involved in this Absolutely. and there are discrepancies. You've seen these a lot of, of discrepancies Every day. in your career. Yeah. Every day you oh, are, yeah. you see something that's not accurate. Absolutely. And yeah. so yeah, and so a lot of us won't know what to look for. Absolutely. Um, another thing is like on our reports, yeah. if a if a company is reporting to all three of the bureaus, that means the information should be consistent from one bureau to the next. Right. So if you say, oh, $200, that would mean that it's reporting on TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Right. But you can't say you owe 200 here and 350 there. Like, what are we doing? Right. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Right. And so that mixed information is also hurting your scores. Yeah. All that mixed information, all these duplicate accounts. All of this information is affecting who you are, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. by removing negative information and implementing positive accounts, this is how we're going to raise those scores. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 you, you can look at me. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm actually overwhelmed. I, first of all, I, I just want to thank you really for taking your time out uh, to, to, to do this. And so uh, just like a lot of people listening this morning, I'm going to go take a look at my... Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. We didn't get to that. I did not know that. But, uh, you know, a lot of us are going to be kind of going and taking stock of our credit because mm -hmm. I now realize just how important it was. I just yeah. thought it was annoying for a long time. But <laughs> now uh, I realize that it is it is your footprint. It is, Absolutely. you know, it's exactly how you look. And so, uh, first of all, I just found out through uh, one of my trusted sources that it is your five year anniversary. Yes, it is. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this has just been like a dream come true. Um, five years ago, I decided to go into something business. different. Absolutely. So, uh, quick story. I remember uh, the phone call. I called my husband. Yeah. I was driving home, and I mean, at that point, I was living in Naperville, and so driving back to Gary. I mean, that distance is kind of grand, right? Yeah, it is. And so I was over it. Yeah. <laughs> so I called him and I said, you know what? I got this idea. I want to. You were driving from Gary to Naperville for work? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I, yeah. I went up there for a rib fest one time and yeah. I got, I got <laughs> nauseous. Go ahead. <laughs> right. And so I think that it was just one, one of those moments like, okay, I'm not doing this. Yes. This is not my life, right? Yeah. So I called him and I said, so I want to quit my job. And I want to start a business. He goes, slow down. Yeah. Wait slow a minute. Down, Ain't nobody quitting no jobs around here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but the thing is, um, 
with trust and understanding, and he knows how I move. He knows that I'm not going to put us in particular in a position right. that's going to hurt us. And we have not looked back. Best decision ever. I believe. No, listen. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You are, you know, from this this opportunity that I've had to just kind of sit opposite you and really sit and talk about your wheelhouse. I'm, you know, I'm not just saying this because you're on my show, of course. I, you know, I'm saying it because you're on my show, but I'm not just saying it. You really do seem that you you are in your groove. I mean, this Thank is, you. I mean, the, you're not looking at anything. The knowledge is kind of coming out. And I really, I mean, and then on top of that, and this is kind of what I wanted to add, you know, when we were, when we were kind of closing out is that, you know, it seemed talking about credit, I've always imagined. And, you know, where it, and, I, and if you've had, you know, these notices or anything ever mm-hmm. coming to your house, it, it, the, the thought of sitting and talking to a, quote, credit person or a credit repair, repair person has always seemed like something that was, you know, it, it was like talking to a stranger. You didn't sure. really want to open up and talk like that. I can honestly tell you that the way that you kind of have, you know, the way that you move and the way that you're kind of, um, I guess working it or the way you are is very inviting for a person because it feels like you're definitely on my side. Yep. I can kind of just be honest, <laughs> like, look, I don't know what happened here. Let's just, because it, I mean, I think that, that that's a, a welcoming thing because I think a lot of people and not just myself are kind of, are kind of scared or intimidated by trying to deal with credit. Exactly. And I, I truly appreciate that. And I hear that all the time when I, uh, you know, when I have uh, new clients yeah. calling in, number one, this is just a voice over the phone or or yeah. on a Zoom call. You don't know me, right? right? But what you do know is that you have an issue that needs to be addressed. Right. And you may have heard, she might be able to help you, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> so we've well, got clients in most states. Yeah. We, we have helped thousands of people at this point wow. really uh, get their credit back in order. Um, and it's a beautiful thing when folks call me and they feel comfortable. Yeah. And that means that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Absolutely. The number one thing that I thought of when we were... Uh, really getting the business together, transparency is key. Yeah. You know, uh, open communication. I want my clients, no matter how many clients we work with, I want you to feel like I can pick up the phone at any point and contact her to find out what else I need to do. Yeah. Um, I think that just kind of having that open door policy type thing yeah. Has yeah. really made a difference. And I listen. Yeah. I'm yeah. hearing what you're saying. Yeah. Because number one, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. I know what it feels like to yeah. not have credit and also feel like you don't have any options. Right. So I'm helping my clients know you have options. You don't have to live with bad credit. Right. And yes, there are people like myself that are here to help you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, this is absolutely amazing. And so give us, uh, once again, give us your information, please. I want you, I, I definitely want you to promote this uh, this wonderful business. Congratulations, by the way, on five years, because, uh, you know, not only being, you know, being great at what you're doing right here, but just being a, an entrepreneur and, and gambling on yourself. And we're yeah. starting to, that's kind of our motive, our, our, our motif here on this show. That's something that we promote. And to meet a, a, a woman who is doing that, and then of course you got the support of your husband and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome, right there. Thank you. So give us uh, give us the logistics <laughs> about you. Yep. So again, uh, social, culture, and credit repair. We've been in business for five years. We've helped thousands of people at this point. Got clients in most states. Yeah. Um, really doing big things. Um, we have long business hours. <laughs> oh my goodness. Long business hours. So 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Wait a minute. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down, Rob. What? What are you doing? Yes. You're, you're you're there almost twelve hours. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. go go ahead. <laughs> What's that about? You're supposed to go into business to work less. Well, you know, we have a small team that's helping us out. Yeah. And, uh, the the cool thing about this business is that uh, we can take it anywhere. Yeah. And we love to travel, so we're all over the place. Oh, so like yeah, sitting yeah, on yeah. beaches, like, yep, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so do you have a physical location? No, everything is uh pretty much done over the phone and online. Yes. It's, it's virtually impossible to have a physical location when you have clients in, in every st- states. In, in multiple yeah. states. So at this point we can do a Zoom call, you know, we can have that conversation yeah. that way. But yeah, no need for brick and mortar. Now you you have a web you have a website. Yes, yeah, yes. Go ahead. So if folks are interested in just finding out more about the company, you can go to my credit life and that's life with a Y. My credit com. life, mm-hmm. I like it. Yep. Uh, you can sign up online. You can put all your information so we don't have to transfer any information over the phone. You are able to sign up directly on a secured site without any issues whatsoever. That's amazing. That's <laughs> amazing. It has been an extreme pleasure, Robin, talking Thank to you. you. I look forward to talking to you again. And you want to know, I'm going to go ahead and say it on the air. 
I wanted to set something up where you could possibly talk to some seniors because oh, I, I think you talk, I mean, I've learned so much today, but you know, why not get in front of this? And, you know, we were just talking about that. Why not these young men and women that are about to go out into the world for the next phase of their beautiful lives and give them the tools that they need in order to go out here and be successful so they don't fall into some of these credit pitfalls that we're talking about. Catch them before they get through the industry. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Right now, what we've been doing, um, I've been instructing over at uh, both meals, U.S. Steel and uh, God, what is it, um, Arshlor? I think it's a, uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, Cl- uh, Cleveland Cleveland Clips. Yeah, now. so they yeah, have get those there. steel workers and all that money. <laughs> right, it's like you know we're there talking to them now that they may have made a few mistakes, but I want to make sure we're catching the young folks too. Exactly, <laughs> we're gonna make it happen. I appreciate this. This has been an absolute pleasure, and of course, credit swag. Where can they get some of that credit swag? She, she has an event. Oh, you got an event. Tell we me do, about your we event. We do. Um, that was one thing I definitely, I don't know how I missed that. Because I got so. you off on another tangent. <laughs> I do that. Well, so we are having our fifth year anniversary party this Saturday at the Dean uh, and Barbara Community Center in Maryville. Yes. Huge, huge events. I'm so excited. Dean and Barbara White Center. Yeah. I love Dean White. I, I love that man. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be nice. We've got special guests. Uh a few folks coming in from New York. Look at you. Things. So, yeah. yeah, we are definitely, uh, because it's a, this company is all about the community. We yeah. want to definitely give back. So, folks that are interested, I suggest they contact me uh, as soon as possible because tickets are limited. Yeah, well, give us the mm-hmm. give us the logistics on the tickets. How yep. much are they? So, tickets are $15 in advance, $25 at the door. Okay. Uh, so, you can reach me at 331-201-9881. Um, and again, that's this Saturday. Doors open at 530. All right. Once again, congratulations, Rob. This you. has been a real pleasure. I am so glad to have had the opportunity. Once again, we're going to make something happen. And uh, congratulations. And tell your husband uh, congratulations as well, because uh, both of you are a good team because you support each other. So we appreciate it. All right. Thank there you. you go. That was wonderful right <laughs> there. That was wonderful. I, that was a great. And I,